السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آن بی ہاف آف مرکز صحابہ دا وائس آف اہل سنا و جماعہ وی پرزینٹ یو لیسن نمبر ایٹین فورٹی تھری آف دا ڈیلی نصیحہ اینڈ ایڈوائس ٹو ڈے ود اے گریس اینڈ مرسی آف آل میٹ اللہ جل ولا وی فوکس آن دا ایتھ آف جماد الاولا It was on the 8th of Jumad al-Ula, 1429 after Hijrah, corresponding to the 13th of May, 2008. Sheikh Saad Abdullah Asali Masabah, who was born in 1930, the 14th Amir of Kuwait, passed away. Kuwait is a small country, just over 4.5, 4.4 million people, and majority of the people are expats, 65%, two-thirds of the people there. And remember that the Kuwaitis are just over a million, basically. And if you look at the demographics of Kuwait, then you will find two-thirds, about 66, 67, belong to the Ahlul Sunnah. And there is a Shia population there of about 25, 30%. And then you get the Chinese, you get the Hindus, you get Christians, all of them. But they live in harmony with the help and mercy of all, Mati Allah, Jalla Wala. Regarding the Shias, obviously it's a big threat there. And remember, Iran will always be supporting them. And with a strong foothold in the Arab countries, whether it be Syria, and whether it be Iraq, whether it be Lebanon, and then Yemen. So all these four countries are under the rule and under the influence of the Shias. So they also will play a prominent role. When you study Kuwait, you will know it reached prominence during the time when Saddam Hussein occupied them, and that was obviously a trick by the Americans to encourage him and then wage war against him, and then crippled the whole of Iraq and the whole Middle East, basically. So nevertheless, remember that their greatest supply is about oil and so forth. So when we study the Muslim countries, Arab countries, we must be concerned about four or five things. Number one, obviously, is Islam. And who are the people there? Are the Sunnis? Are the Shias? Shias are out of the fold of Islam. Second one is this, that are they really practicing on Islam or is it only lip service? There are some great scholars there as well in Kuwait. So, alhamdulillah, when we listen to their lectures and so forth, there seems to be a certain amount of freedom which they can exercise there, which which most Arab countries do not allow nowadays. And then we see that, you know, they haven't fallen so far that for the trap of making peace and all that with the Israeli apartheid regime. So, so far that is a good sign. But how long will that last? We don't know. Then obviously that they have thousands of American forces there and, you know, propping up their oil reserves and what have you. So obviously all this is a burden on their fiscal. The end of the day, we as Muslims should know three things all from Quran. Number one, when we are occupied by foreigners, non-Muslims, then always read Surah 10, Surah Yunus, and verses 85, 86. You see Nabi Musa a.s. and his people, that his people were enslaved by the Pharaoh and his cronies. He taught the people the following Dua, chapter 10, verses 85, 86. Allah hitawakalna, upon Allah alone do we place our trust. Rabbana. Oh Allah, do not make us a trial and a target for a people who are the oppressors and ten-pot dictators. Oh Allah, you rescue us through your mercy from a people who are the disbelievers. Second one for the Muslim Arab rulers, You must prepare for yourself against the enemies to the best of your ability. 
This is something which is not something one can fathom. They have all the world resources, but not one Arab country has a nuclear weapon and so forth. And apartheid Israel has hundreds. Pakistan, a poor country, has, but they don't have. So that is an indictment, remember that. And third one is that sincerely you need to have the ulama to give you guidance, not the other way around, where they lock up and imprison the ulama. What is happening now in the Arab countries, Wailul Arab, and destruction to the Arabs, authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim. May all, Allah, have mercy on us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.